Hello and welcome to this tutorial. It's Ola Dominuko here and I will show you today how I would edit this portrait to make it look more painterly and dreamy. So first I will start with contrast. I, I like my photos to be a little bit less contrasty when I start with them. And I will up the shadows. Um, so for now this is okay. I think the highlights are a bit too much and I think it's also a bit too yellow. So Okay Okay Now I will add a little bit of different type of contrast by reducing black slightly So now the image seems a little bit more even. I am going to um, try brighten this background in there just a little bit okay just to make it a little bit more uniform okay and now I am going to add a little bit more with a brush just here because I don't think it the mask reached there all right so now that I have my image look a bit more flatter I am going to I am going to open it up in Photoshop and I am sorry if you hear any weird noises I am <laughs> just outside because the weather is beautiful today and I just decided to do it here in my backyard so now that the image will be open in Photoshop we just need to wait a little bit. Okay, so now that I have the image open in Photoshop, I can zoom in on his little cute face and start editing all the blemishes and the little spots that make the skin look uneven. So first of all, before I start, I am going to click Command J on Mac to make a copy of my layer so that I can always see my before and afters. And I am going to use a healing brush um, this one I'm going to use this healing brush so that I don't have to keep copying and sampling um, the area that I want to heal from and I'm going to let Photoshop do that so what I'm doing now is I'm just painting over all those little things that can make skin look a little bit more uneven okay I'm going to do this and this here and I think that it looks already good so let's zoom out and let's see um, before and after it is very subtle because we do not want to make it look too fake it needs to be nice and natural I think this little thing is a little bit distracting oops so I think for this one I need to sample myself sorry so let me sample from just next to it and just paint over gone and also uh, we are going to take care of this little hanging drop here so i am also going to copy sample myself i'm going to copy from here and extend the lip a little bit now i'm going to go to the other side and do the same okay and again Okay, maybe try to even it out a bit more. <laughs> it's not really working. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to a liquify filter and I'm just going to push this line up a little bit so that it looks more uniform. So I'm going to click on Z and go close, 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 closer, all the way in. Um, get this little tool, make it smaller, and just kind of lift this up. And from this side a little bit. Oh, okay. And before and after. It's very subtle, but trust me, it makes all the difference. Okay. So now, what I think, um, I don't think I should have. I don't. I don't think I like this um, light spot I have in here. So I'm going to try and mask it out, I mean paint it um, away with a healing brush 
Oops. Okay. Let's see. Before and after. Okay. For now, that will do. And I think I'm gonna leave the bubbles <laughs> inside his uh, little mouth. Okay. So we have before and after. So what I'm going to do now is work on the skin with a frequency separation. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to copy my image two times so that I have three copies of it. So one, two, three. I will name this one texture. This one I will call tone and I'm gonna just turn off this one for now. On the tone layer I'm going to go to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. I'm going to select on the area that has the most texture, which is this one, I believe, okay. And I am going to blur it out so that the texture is no longer visible and I think here is perfect there's no texture visible so i'm gonna click ok and now back to the texture layer i'm going to make it visible again and i'm going to apply it apply image so i'm going to go to image apply image now let's make sure that the layer selected is the tone one so now you can kind of see through it uh, blending mode needs to be set at subtract Scale 2 and offset 128. 128 is neutral gray here. So I'm gonna click OK. Okay, now we can go to our uh, blending mode and put it on uh, linear light. Okay, so what did this, or what, what that did, um, is it separated our texture from tone. So if I group these two together, you can see that they look identical to the layer below, which is perfect. That's what we wanted. We just wanted to separate texture from the color or tone. Okay, so now what we do to kind of smooth out the skin and do the so-called frequency separation is get our brush, change it to mixer brush. Now, um, sorry, now, uh, with my settings, I like to have the wet at 9% load, can be a little bit more. You can adjust it as you go because it, each image is a little bit different. Um, okay, so now with my uh, graphic tablet and my pen, I'm going to sli slightly um, start mixing the colors on the color layer. And because my wet and load are at low percent it's going to take a while and a few strokes to see the difference it's it's going to be very very subtle um, you need to make sure that you are brushing the colors in the direction of the skin um, and that you are not going the opposite way so for example here we have this little line here and you can see that this is the direction that it goes if i start mixing the colors this way you see, what's, it's, it's not looking good, like I'm starting to get some weird color leaks. So what you do, you actually go and start brushing this way and try not to um, change the direction too much. So it's going to be a little bit of work, uh, but it's well worth it. Oops. So it's very subtle, but you can see how it makes the skin look more even. If you want to have the effect a little bit stronger, you can um, change the load. Sorry, I didn't mean to do this one. You can change the load to be a bit more. So now um, it's going to make a difference a little bit faster. So when you start painting, painting it doesn't really look like anything is happening. Uh, so it's really good to check from time to time the progress by going um, by uh, hiding and revealing this mask. So I'm just now going to speed it up a bit and I will continue 
when I am finished. Okay, um, you can also use it on the hair to make them look a bit softer. Uh, I like using that on hair and on clothes a bit like fabrics to make the wrinkles go away a little bit. I don't think I have to do it here much, although I think here would be a nice touch. Okay, so I'm going to start blending them out just to make the fabric look a bit softer and a little bit more even. I'm gonna make this bigger and just like start blending, blending, blending. Okay. And can go closer here. Oops, that's too close. Okay. Um zoom in a little bit and start working on the rest of the body because we don't want just to leave the face done. I don't know if I mentioned, but let me just say it. Um, the way how the frequency separ separation works, this technique that we did here, let me actually call it um, frequency separation. How it works, as I said, it separates the texture from the tone, so we can change the colors, blend the colors together, but not affecting the texture. So the skin stays in there and we don't blur it too much, so it doesn't look fake. We just work on the colors and make them smooth under the texture. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, so let me continue brushing away. See the before and after, there's a big difference. And I really love how this technique makes the skin look very, very soft and uniform. Um, just for me, it's just perfect um, just for achieving this painterly effect. Okay, now this hand, and we are almost done here. You want to make sure that you don't blend in the shadows together with the lights because it's going to look muddy and dirty. Um, so you see when I uh, work on the skin, I don't just go all the way like this because there's a shadow here, there's a darker area here. I just go uh, area by area, one by one. Okay. I hope it makes sense. Okay, now let's work on the torso. And just as I said, I am following the direction of the skin folds and just to make it look um, nice and smooth. I'm not gonna mix this shadow, maybe just a bit on the here so it blends in and looks a bit softer. Uh, but here you need to make sure that you keep the consistency. Beautiful. Let's see before and after, and I love it. Okay, just let's blend in a little bit more here and the little leg. Okay. Oh, adorable. So before and after, and I am very happy with it. So what I will do, I will merge these two together so that I can always go back and see before and after. Okay. So now what I want to do is work on the eyes. Let me actually close it. Um, I'm going to work on the eyes. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer with some curves. And I don't really worry about the whole image in general. I'm just looking at the eyes right now. So I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. And 
I think that's good. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to click Command or Control I to invert this mask. I'm gonna take the brush, change the color to white. I also need to change my brush from a mixer brush to a normal painting brush and I am going to create the lights. So how it works usually, you want to create the light not on the whole eye, I don't want to apply it on the whole eye, it's going to look fake. You want to apply it on the opposite sides of the catch light, which is here. And if you don't have the catch light in your images, you can just kind of figure out which direction is the light coming from and go on the opposite way. I, of course I can brighten the whole eye and just make this one more prominent. Uh, so, because I am using the opacity brush, I'm going to slightly, very mildly paint around here as well, so the whole eye appears lighter. I want this catch light to be a bit brighter too. And also, I would like to make uh, the white part of the eye a little bit brighter. So, I'm barely pressing on my pen just to make the it's very very subtle and let's see before and after and I am very very happy with it so I, what I am going to do is I am going to merge these together and his eyes are already very very blue but I usually add a little bit of uh, saturation to the eyes so just a little bit and again I am going to invert this mask and just paint this color all over his beautiful blue eyes So, before and after, it's so subtle, let's try a little bit more, okay, let's see if it's not too, too much, no, it's perfect, okay, just, let's try to paint this in, okay, so before and after, it's very, very subtle, we don't want to go and do anything crazy, although I think I kind of leaked here the color, so I'm going to invert the uh, colors, to black because black hides and I'm going just to make sure that I am not putting extra saturation where it doesn't need to be oh, that should be on 100 <laughs> okay let's see after I think it added a little bit purple to around the catch light which I am not a big fan of so I'm just going to simply remove it Beautiful. I'm going to copy, uh, merge them together and this is our before and after. And I really love how it looks. Um, okay, so now what I am going to do is I am going to work on some sharpness. Um, I am going to copy this layer just in case I mess something up. I am going to go to sharpen and unsharp mask. Um, I use this technique because I really like how it makes the image look. I'm going to go on 20% here and on 20 radius. I saw this technique online by one of the photographers, which I don't really remember the name now. Um, but yes, he he called it a 2010 technique. Uh, so let me show you. You first do 20% here and 20 radius. And you can see how it adds a little bit of contrast as well which is really cool. So I'm going to mask this out, invert the mask and only paint it on the little boy, on your subject. So I don't want to make the hair too sharp because I actually like it softer. But I'm just going to start painting a little bit on the sharp areas and I only actually focus on the face. I don't really care if his little hands are sharp or anything because the face is the main focus here. So once this is sharper, I'm going to merge it together again, uh, copy this layer and now go again to sharpen and unsharp mask and I am just going to do 10%, 10% and now with these settings, I'm going to invert the mask, oh sorry, <laughs> I'm going to mask it out first, invert it and only paint over the eyes, make them very sharp and stand out. 
through the nose a little bit and the mouth. Okay, so merge together and our before and after. Okay, beautiful. So now I'm going to do some dodging and burning. Okay, so let me do some dodging and burning. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two adjustment layers. One, I'm oh, sorry, uh, two adjustment layers. One will be for um, highlights and the one will be for uh, burning, for darkening. Okay, so of course this is not going to look like this. Let me just... Do it together, group it, dodge and burn and of course um, this is too much so I'm going to invert them okay so with my brush I'm going to start painting and oh oh I think I did <laughs> the opposite Okay, um, so I'm just going to start creating some highlights, um, I need to be aware of where the light is coming from, so I'm just going to start painting a bit, um, essentially what I want to do is I want to make those highlights that already exist more prominent, so Here's what I am going to do. Just where those highlights already exist. Just make them a bit, a bit more light. Um, and, but also I want to add some of my own to make the, this painterly look. So I'm not really worried about the sharp edges that I'm creating right now because I'm going to feather the mask out a bit after. Uh, so I know this looks very strong right now, but don't worry, it's not going to be like this when I am done after. So I do it so I can see what I am doing, uh, but afterwards I am going to decrease the opacity of the layer. Um, so I don't really worry about this too much. It's a little white light, okay. A um, little bit on the ear here as well on the hair we want to create this um, kind of like a light um, highlight <laughs> okay now we go here on the little neck and here we just like paint over all those existing highlights i think that may be a little strong as well okay yeah, that's perfect. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and now create a little highlight on this little arm. And here too. Here on the leg. And also on little fingers. like here just wherever I see them I am going to paint over them all right and this leg here is hidden but also should get some of the light okay so I actually think that the body looks perfect but the face is too much so I'm going to invert it 
uh, make the opacity very very low and start removing a little bit one two I think now it's more uniform okay um, so I'm just going to leave it like this for this little bit because I actually like it but it might be too much when I add the, the, the darkening parts so now with the darken layer I'm also going to start painting over the dark parts of the images to make uh, make it pop more right to make the contrast uh, be stronger Okay, so here I want to shade the little nose a little bit. Oh, <laughs> my opacity. Uh, okay. So we are just making this 3D pop image. Okay, you can darken the eyebrows a little bit as well. Uh, just very sudden, I mean, subtle, very subtle uh, changes. Okay, little cheekies, hair, uh, the nose contouring. Okay, and a little bit here. I like to darken the eyelashes and the uh, around the eyes to make the eyes look um, more painterly and stand out more. Now I'm going to do the little ear here. Everywhere that I see the shadows, I'm going to make them more prominent. And also, I can shape the lips a bit more. Okay. Oh, I love it. Okay, and now I can start working on the torso. That's a bit too much. You need to be careful um, with how you place your brush so you don't make it look dirty. You just want to create this contrast. And remember, this is strong now, but we can always make it uh, less. You can minimize it. So there's no worries about that. I think that that already make it a bit dirty. Um, okay, here. I want to make the folds more prominent. Um, she's a baby and the folds are so cute. You also, after you're done with the body, you also want to go and work on uh, on the background, background and make it also more 3D popping out. So you open the fingers here. This doesn't look good, so I'm going to erase with the black. Okay. Right. So, oh, a bit more here. Yes, well. And around the highlights to make them pop a bit more. Okay, so now that I'm done with the body, I'm going to go and paint around uh, the background. So wherever I see dark, I'm going to darken it. And white lighten it. I also want to create a little bit of vignette, um, so I'm going to get this here, and I see how the light is going from this direction, so I'm going to make a little bit of vignette on this side here. It 
just to draw the eyes. Oh wow, <laughs> I didn't realize. And this is just to draw the eyes more to the to our subject. That's a little bit. Okay, so now on the lighten layer I can do the same. Just around him a bit. And then on the light parts create more um, highlights. I think this part here is already bright enough, so I'm not gonna be touching it. Okay. Right, so now with our dodging and burning, you can see how we made the image pop, but I think it is a little bit too much. So I can always go down a little bit. So, as you see, it's not as prominent, but it's good. <laughs> so we can play with it and see which one you like most and I think I wanted a little bit more than that perfect so I uh, maybe a little bit more yeah perfect so now I can merge them together and I can see the total before and complete after um, I also would like to create kind of like a blurred effect on on the fabric here so what I'm going to do I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to take the brush I'm going to keep the opacity low and I'm going to keep sampling the colors and painting those colors over so you see it's creating kind of a blur effect but without really using the blur tool or the, or, or the blur filter so I just want to like kind of make it all a little bit softer and a little bit more dreamy if you will I uh, also would like to come a little bit closer here to the parts that he's holding in his little hands and I copy a bit and paint over and because my opacity is low I can go a few times to make the effect stronger or not as strong. Okay, let's see before and after. Oh my goodness, it's so amazing. Okay, I am going to merge them together and I think we are done. I am going to um, save it actually <laughs> i'm not done i actually don't like the crop on this one too much um and i want to use the generative fill from adobe however it's prohibiting me uh, from doing it for now i don't know why it's asking me to restart the photoshop so i'm going to do that i'm going to do that i'm going to save this uh, copy to lightroom let's double check okay let's save to lightroom so I saved it to Lightroom. I'm going to quit Photoshop. Okay, back in Lightroom, I can make some more adjustments to make it more, uh, make it pop a bit more. So I know it's already sharp, but I like to apply a little bit more sharpening than that. I am going to apply more sharpening, but mask it out. Okay, let's see before after <laughs> super subtle I can't even see the difference okay and now I would like to okay, set. Um, I would like to add one second a bit of luminance to make it nice and dreamy and now again to sharpening and sharpen a bit more okay before and after okay beautiful very subtle um so i think now that i am back here i can add a little bit of uh, 
melatonin melatonin um, adjustments let's see for and after I think I like it better now and I also would like to now add a little bit of contrast okay um, let's open Photoshop beta sorry it has to be beta the normal uh, standard Photoshop as of now um, which is Saturday June the 3rd 2023 does not have the generative fill okay so now that I have my Photoshop I can go again and edit in Adobe Photoshop and it's going to ask me if I want beta so yes I want to edit in beta and let's go in going to copy it um, and again uh, sorry I'm going to make the image bigger and I think I like how it is oh it's not in the middle okay I think that is more or less where I want it to be I'm going to get the selection tool select my picture invert it because we want only this to be filled and click on the generative fill so now here you can add some prompts uh, which I am not going to use I'm going to use just generate which will let Photoshop figure it out on its own in terms of what to fill the selected area with okay uh, so now we have filled our background with content and it looks just like I shot it like this this tool is perfect okay so now that i have this i am going to save it back to photoshop oh, sorry back to lightroom by clicking command s or Control s okay so we finished this image however i think that i would like a little bit more vignette here so i'm going to again select this image and i don't want to go on the middle because this, the light uh, looks like it's going this way and this is also how we did the vignetting before so I'm going to invert it and I am going to lower the shadows a little bit in here and maybe slightly like this let me just see how it looks like before and after yeah I think I like it <laughs> Um, thank you so much for purchasing this tutorial. I hope that you learned some new techniques and that you learned something valuable that you will be using in your own photography. If you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to email me at mentor at olaphotography.ca. I am always here to answer any questions that you may have. Um, thank you so much again. Have a wonderful day. Bye.